Time to Smile with Eddie Cantor is being broadcast tonight from a Marine training camp in California for the entertainment of the Marine personnel. This does not constitute an endorsement of the sponsor's product by the Navy Department. Ladies and gentlemen, before a huge audience of men of the 2nd Marine Division, Fleet Marine Force, Camp Elliott at San Diego, California, Bristol Myers, the makers of Ipana for the Smile of Beauty, and Sal Hepatica for the Smile of Health, present It's Time to Smile! With Eddie Cantor! the Japanese can hear that. <laughs> Thank you, Harry Von Zellen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here we are broadcasting from Camp Elliott with an audience of 1,500 Marines. You know what a Marine is? Yeah, well... A Marine is a large body of man entirely surrounded by women. Oh. <laughs> well, now, Eddie... <laughs> That, that's a new definition, but I've, I've always been under the impression that Marines are exceedingly tough. Tough? Yeah. Tough? Mm. You betcha. These Marines are so tough, they eat their meat raw and then sit in boiling hot water to cook it. <laughs> you know, Harry Von Zell, Harry, you know they have two Marine stations here, Harry. Camp Elliott and Camp Linda Vista. Oh, well, which place has the most Marines? The it? Rainbow Gardens. <laughs> It's quite a place, Harry. They've got a sign over the cloakroom, not responsible for hats, coats, or Marines left over 30 days. <laughs> yes, sir. When they play, Eddie, they play hard, but they do take their work seriously. Oh, you're right, Harry. You should have seen them this afternoon when they had their war games. War I games? Was around... yeah, yes. Oh. oh, yes, Harry. A lot of them get around in a circle, and one guy starts shooting. He throws out a couple of cubes with numbers on them, Harry. <laughs> With numbers. I don't know, Eddie. That sounds pretty dangerous to me. It is, if the cubes are loaded. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dice, huh? Yeah, now you know what the government means by keep them rolling. Yeah. <laughs> well, Eddie, you certainly have learned a lot here today. Well, Harry, among other things, I learned that the defense workers here in San Diego are working with such speed that they don't stop for a single minute. If you're near one of those defense plants, keep moving. I stopped in front of a defense plant this morning for two minutes. Right away, a guy slapped wings on me, stuck a propeller on my nose, painted U.S. bomber on my back, and there I was, a Popeye P-38. <laughs> now, you must be kidding about no, that. No, Harry. Practically everything out here has been turned into defense machinery. Everything is a... This morning, I stuck a nickel in a pinball machine, started to shoot, and so help me, the machine started to shoot back. <laughs> Is that the phone? I think I heard the phone a minute ago. Hello? Hello? Eddie Cantor speaking. Hello? 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 How do you do? <laughs> Good morning, the mad Russian. What are you doing on the phone, Russian? You should be in San Diego. Why, why, why aren't you here? I was detained because I had to kiss my wife goodbye. Well, why should I detain you? I waited for a blackout. <laughs> I can't understand why you're not here yet. I gave you very simple directions. Just go to Route 66 and follow the white line. I did, I did. I followed it to Santa Monica, then to Santa Barbara. I followed that white line for 60 miles before I realized it was on the back of a skunk. <laughs> a skunk? Yes. So I got out of my car, walked up to him, and we stood there face to face. But where is the skunk now? The last time I saw him, he was burying his fork. <laughs> well, Russian, you better find the right road and hurry up. By the way, have you enough gasoline? Who needs gasoline? I've got a tank full of nitroglycerin. What are you... What are you talking... Nitroglycerin? Just listen to this motor pump. 
when I step on the starter. having trouble with the mad Russian again? Yeah, me and Germany both. Yeah. If you don't if you if you don't think that Germany is having trouble, you should have heard the shortwave broadcast from Berlin that I heard last night. Here's what happened. Take it away, Berlin. This is Berlin. We now present a famous German news analyst, H. V. Colton Auschwitz. Heil Hitler, slash. Germany has found a new way to make rubber. We can make all the rubber we want out of pig's knuckles. There's only one hitch. We got no pig's knuckles. <laughs> there is a big pig shortage in Germany. In fact, we got only one pig left. Heil Hitler. <laughs> have annihilated 9,999,999. The remaining one is very stubborn and is holding us on all fronts. <laughs> Flash, our foreign spies report that the people in the United States is starving. Nobody has anything to eat because everybody in America is walking around saying, what's cooking? <laughs> But here in Germany, things is different. Every week we are giving more and more food rationing cards to the people. And the Fuhrer has just issued a proclamation that you should save all your ration cards, and when you collect enough of them, put them in a big pile and eat them because there's no more food. <laughs> also, there's no more Hitler. The Marines have landed. You get that dialect. Yeah, I don't. Oh, there it is again. Hello? Hello, Eddie Cannon speaking. Hello? Eddie Cannon? Russian. You were supposed to drive up here to San Diego. What happened? I met some very charming people on the way. They like me so much, they insisted I stay over here. Where are you? Mm, can you bail me out? <laughs> You're in jail? What for? Driving without an automobile. <laughs> Why, you idiot, nobody can drive without an automobile. Come down here and explain that to my finance company. <laughs> Look, Russian, just mention my name and they'll let you out. Very well. Kemper, I mentioned your name. Well, what happened? Can you bail me out? <laughs> Look, will you call me back? I've got to get... Harry, I've got to get rid of that man. We'll get rid of him. Just keep it easy. And while we're waiting for the mad Russian, ladies and gentlemen... Here is radio's delicious, delightful, delectable, Dinah Shaw. Now, don't be nervous, Dinah. Just because you're among 1,500 Marines, they, they all know how to behave themselves. They're perfect gentlemen. Just stand behind his barbed wire, that's all. <laughs> and sing for the first time on the air that brand new song, Conchita. He was a handsome young Irish lad, and she was a Mexican beauty. It was the Esther and I, my dad, romantically he was on duty. A boy and a girl, he's a star. I can tell it in 64 bars. His Irish heart went bingo when he saw the rose of Warren. Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez. Oh, you're a lovely single. For me, there's but one girl, he said. Conchita, Marquita, Lolita, Pepita, Rosita, Juanita, Lopez. Mandolins began to play, and her lips were there to kiss. As they danced, I heard him say, New Jersey was never like this. The bells began to ringle as they rode away on a 
Shame on you, Harry. What is that indicatora de salud business? Well, is... Eddie, that's uh, remember sal hepatica for the smile of health in Spanish. In your but kind it... of Spanish, Harry, I, I'd never know, and I don't want to miss anything, so would you please stick to English, do you okay, mind? Okay, Eddie, you mind? Sure. Uh... Because, after all, I wouldn't want anyone to miss knowing how much faster sal hepatica helps them feel better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you wake up feeling headachy and under the weather because you need a laxative... Just take speedy sal hepatica right away. Because then sal hepatica brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. If you remember that about sal hepatica, never again will you have to put off till night taking the laxative you need in the morning. And you won't have to risk feeling miserable the rest of the day. And remember this about sal hepatica, too. Sparkling sal hepatica also helps counteract excess gastric acidity. Helps turn a sour stomach sweet again. So get a bottle of sal hepatica from your druggist first thing tomorrow. And take it whenever you need a laxative, morning, noon, or night. See how much faster you feel better when you rely on gentle, speedy sal hepatica. Say, say, Harry Von Zell. What, Eddie? You know, this place is getting me. I, I've been here all afternoon. I've been doing a lot of serious things, Harry, and I made up my mind. I've, I've decided to join the Marines. I, I've really decided, Harry. You? I, yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, oh, Eddie, yeah. I think that's very as well, but you, the Marines want men. Or women, not you. <laughs> what, what makes you think the Marines will accept you, Eddie? Well, listen, Harry, a lot of Marines want Hetty Lamar, but they'll settle for Martha Ray. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> He'd settle for Edna May Oliver. <laughs> No, but really, Eddie, you're you're much too old for the service. What do you mean, too old? There's nobody too old to serve his country. Why, when George Washington fought at Valley Forge, he was 45. I mean, how old were you at the time? I was a baby. Shut up. <laughs> no use trying to talk me out of this, Harry. I've already sent for the doctor here, and I'm going to take my physical just as soon as he arrives. But, but there's no use to... Hello? Oh, doctor, I... Look, I, I want an examination. I... I'd like you to take a look at my physique. Physique? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't worry about me, doctor. Just give me the examination. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Will, Cannon, look, will, but... you, will you give me the toughest marine test that there is? Just give me anything that you give these fellows you can give. Believe me. Well, it's rather strenuous for a man like you, but if you insist, very well. Uh, get down on your knees and begin. Yes. One, two, three. A Larry. Four, five, six. A Larry. There you are. I picked up all the jacks. Well, congratulations. You are now a Marine. Yep. Do you, uh, do you feel all right? Well, that'll give you an idea how I feel. I'm a little winded, but don't worry. I regret that I have but six jacks to pick up for my country. All right, now, there's only one thing more, Mr. Cantor. I have to uh, give you a blood test. Uh, a, bl a bl blood test? Yeah. Well, oh... Hey, I'm not afraid. Just unpack your needle and let's go. I can take it. I'm, I'm tough. I'm... Oh. oh. Hey, doctor. Uh, he's faded here. Faded? That's funny. I didn't even unpack my needle. Where, uh, where am I? Well, take it easy now, Eddie. He looks what? very weak, doctor. I'd better put him in this bed. Here. A good idea. I'll get a nurse to take care of him. Oh, gee, Harry. I... Harry, I'd love uh, to be a Marine. Nurse, well, it's Gracie Allen. <laughs> Gracie, you're a nurse? Well, oh, Eddie, you've got nothing to worry about. Just do as I say. <laughs> if you do as I say, I'll have you flat on your back in 
no time. You mean flat on my back? Well, don't get excited. You know what I always say. Time wounds all heals. <laughs> Look, I can't understand, Gracie, how you ever became a nurse. Well, it's very simple. Nurses run in my family. They do? Yeah, my father chases them. <laughs> What he catches. Yep, yeah, all right. Gracie, if you're going to be my nurse, tell me, how much experience have you had? Why, well, you're the ninth patient I've had this week. Oh, really? Yeah, if you don't believe me, you can ask Mr. Davis. Who's Mr. Davis? Well, he's the one who's still alive. Oh, that's fine. Oh, well, you see, you're in good hands. Well, last week, a friend of George's had pneumonia, and it took the doctor two whole days to fix him up. Yeah. And the next day, that same fella caught a cold, and you know what I did in 15 minutes? What? I nursed him right back to his pneumonia. <laughs> Will somebody get her out of here? Gracie, is George Burns here with you? No, it's the maid's night out, so George had to stay home and hold hands with the butler. <laughs> Gracie, will you please go away? I don't want a nurse. I am not sick. Oh, do you always have a purple face like that? Purple? My face is purple? I must have a fever. Quick, you'd better get a thermometer. Well, who needs a thermometer? I've got a special gadget for reading temperatures. It works just like a weighing machine. Look, Gracie, I don't want to... You, you simply put your feet on a scale. I stick a penny in your mouth, and a card comes out of your left ear. Yep. <laughs> Gracie, I'd rather use a thermometer. All oh, those thermometers are too complicated. Now, Nursey knows best, so put your tootsies on the scale. Oh, please, don't do that oh, to me. that's fine. Now, open your mouth. Open my mouth? Eddie, open your mouth. Uh-uh. Oh, Eddie, uh. I only want to put in a penny, not a half dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Number, please. Oh, operator, get me Mr. Cantor's temperature. Thank you. Uh. Oh, Gracie, turn this thing off, will you? on the first shot. <laughs> ah, here's your card. Yeah. What does it say, Gracie? You are ambitious, handsome, and in the best of health. Temperature, 104. <laughs> 104? Why, that's crazy. I happen to know that I'm only 99. Well, you can't expect this machine to guess your age, too. No. No, I said my temperature is 99. Oh, it is? You gave me the wrong number. Sorry, I will refund your penny. What was that? Well, on wrong numbers, you get a free ball of chewing gum. <laughs> Gracie, will you go away? Will you go away from me? What's the matter, Eddie? Don't you like me? Please, don't misunderstand. I love you, honey, but I don't want you to nurse me. Oh, well, if that's the way you... Do you really love me? Ah, <laughs> Oh, Gracie, it isn't that I love you. What? I said it's just that I like you. You see, I like you. Well, you don't love me anymore? What? Well, you, you, you said you did a minute ago. Fickle, aren't you? I, I'm not fickle, and I never meant to say I love you. I just... Is there someone else? Look, Gracie. Is there? Yes, there is. Hmm, I'll bet it's Ida. <laughs> Listen, you're, you're speaking of the woman I love. Well, if you love her so much, why don't you marry her? <laughs> why don't you get it over with? Yeah, but I did marry her. I did. You, you a married man and making love to me. Oh, wait till my husband hears about me. All right, Gracie, I give up. I'll do anything you say. Will you nurse me back to health? Oh, now you're being sensible. Now, first, I'll give you something for your diet. Here, eat this. What was that? What did it taste like? A thermometer. Oh, you've eaten before, huh? <laughs> you mean you gave me glass to eat? Yeah. Why, you're crazy. Well, I didn't need it. You did. Now, look, Gracie. Oh, I'll say Um, hello? Who is it you want? Yes, this is Gracie Allen. What's that? Oh, my goodness. An emergency at the Del Mar Hotel. Well, I'll take care of it right away. Say, Eddie, where can I find a Marine? A Marine? Just one. Why, there are 1,500 of them right here. All I want is one, and he has to rush right over to the Del Mar Hotel. Why? What's going on there? 500 sailors are fighting one Marine, and he wants to find a friend.
friend to hold his coat. Wait till you hear what we say about you guys next week. <laughs> Fellas, I want to tell you, I want to tell you that, uh, I shouldn't tell you this, but uh, Gracie Allen has donated her check for this broadcast to the men in service. I want you to... Sometimes. You belong to a club, Gracie? Yes, the, the Beverly Hills Uplift Club. <laughs> I, uh, I wish you could come down next Wednesday afternoon to talk to the girls at our regular Friday meeting. You hold your Friday meetings on Wednesday? Yes. We don't hold the Friday meetings on Tuesday anymore on account of what happened at last Saturday's meeting. <laughs> Some Sunday. Why not try holding the Monday meeting on Thursday? Oh, stop. You sound silly. <laughs> well, anyway, the, the, subject, the subject of this meeting was supposed to be beautiful and how to be it. And I can't find a speaker. Oh, well, maybe your Uncle Eddie can help you out just a bit. Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry Bonzel. Come on, Eddie. Harry, would you like to give a little talk on the subject of how to be beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? No, well, Harry, I'm serious. Well, I, I don't know anything about telling people to be beautiful or how to be... Oh, although I do know one thing. Yeah, yeah, go on. Well, simply the fact that in order to be attractive, a person must have an attractive smile. Yeah, but everyone knows that, Harry. Yes, but not everyone realizes that teeth are seldom at their sparkling best unless gums are firm and healthy. That's why so many dentists recommend the faithful daily use of Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. Because Ipana is not only unsurpassed for cleaning and brightening teeth, but when used with massage, it is especially designed to help give gums the stimulation they need to help keep them from becoming susceptible to gum trouble. So, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you follow this famous healthful routine? Brush your teeth regularly with Ipana toothpaste. And every time you do, put a little extra Ipana on your brush or fingertip and massage it on your gums. In that simple way, ladies and gentlemen, you are helping yourself to an Ipana smile, a smile of beauty. So ask your druggist tomorrow for a tube of Ipana toothpaste. And since the government has ruled that we can't buy toothpaste of any kind unless we take an empty tube to the store in exchange, don't forget to turn in an empty metal tube of some kind when you get your Ipana toothpaste. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we'd like to pay tribute to an actor, yes? Actor, producer, playwright, singer, dancer, songwriter, and great American, George M. Cohan. The theater goers of yesterday thrilled at the sight of a sandy-haired, blue-eyed young Irishman with a hat rakishly set on one side of his head as he sang the song that came not only from his pen, but from his heart. He was born on the 4th of July, and even as a kid, he waved the flag because he loved it. He never stopped waving it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, George M. Cohan gave our flag a permanent wave. Here are some of the songs which you might want to remember and which your mothers and fathers will never forget. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, a Yankee Doodle do a die, a real live nephew of my Uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. I'm a Yankee Doodle sweetheart. London just to ride the pony. I am a Yankee Doodle boy. H A double R I C A N spelled Harrigan. Out of all the Irish blood that's in me, that the devil of man can say a word to get me. H A double R I C A N U C is a name that the name never has been connected with. Harrigan. That's me. George M. Cohen loved the name of Mary. He made the public love it, too. He always had one song about Mary in every one of his shows. Listen to this one from 45 Minutes from Broadway. For it is Mary. Mary, Mary, long 
Johnny Jones. If my regards to Broadway, remember me to Harold Square. Tell all the gang at 42nd Street that I will soon be there. You're a grand old man, you're a high man. And forever in peace may you wait. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats the red, white, and blue, where there's never a post or brag. But you hold a friend and be forgotten. Keep your eye on the red or black. It's the same old song they sing. I love the boys are all mad about Nellie. The daughter of Officer Kelly And it's all day long They bring flowers all dripping with you And they join in the chorus of Nelly Kelly, and I love you Our most prominent songwriters of today will agree that the song for this war has not yet been written. Perhaps it may still be written by George M. Cohan, the man who wrote the great song of the last war. Folks, all the songs you've just heard are in the new Warner Brothers picture, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Next week, we'll be broadcasting from Camp Hahn near Riverside, California, and our special guest will be the very glamorous Veronica Lake. And so until then, remember, I love to spend... Summertime means bigger washing, extra washing, hands constantly in and out of water. So summertime also means touche, thrilling new discovery and skin care. 